Country 550 and 92.9 WAME and W225BD Statesville. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Now here's our host, David Ham. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham, right here on 550 AM, 92.9 FM. And we are also streaming on Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I didn't forget Facebook this week, Bryson. That's correct. You got them all. So we're everywhere. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere we can be, and that's a good thing. Right. Uh, so, yeah, you hit them all. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, and Twitter. And, of course, on YouTube. So there you go. So I got Bryson to my right, and I got Ryan Vargas in here as our visitor this evening. Yeah. And uh, welcome to the WAME Randy Marion Studio. Yeah, absolutely. What you uh, think about this place? Man, it's old school. Yeah. <laughs> it's old school being here, but I but I like it. It's, yeah. it's real cool. Yeah. Well, this is an old building. I was telling you, it was built in 1889, mm -hmm. and uh, the clock tower was added in 1890. So it's been here a few years before we were around. Okay. Before we were thought about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but excited to have you in. I was actually going to introduce you as... Let's see, you're a chicken nugget enthusiast, <laughs> a dream chaser, which yep. is great, you know, a content creator, yep. and an iRacer, yeah. and also a NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, Yep. which is, well, which one of those is the coolest part? Um, I would say the chicken nugget one. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one's pretty good. No, nah, the Xfinity driving, that's, that's, the, that's the most fun part. Yeah, I guarantee you it is. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a lot of questions about that because, you know, it's, that's one of the things. I'm fascinated. I've never been a driver. I've only driven a car. Uh, well, I drive, but I've never driven a race car except for uh, one year I had to haul our pit practice. It was a pit practice car, but mm -hmm. it was it was actually we had the uh, – remember the pit crew competitions mm -hmm. they used to have back in the day? Uh, I had to haul that down to Rockingham, and I got to drive that around in the infield <laughs> and, and stuff. So that was cool. Yeah. That's the only time I've been in a race car like that. Well, besides a 1941 Ford down at uh, Ponce Inlet, down at the old uh, Daytona Road, oh, okay. Beach Road Course. I That's did cool. I drive that, too. That's cool. Yeah. That's really neat. But never in a race race trim or a race situations. Hmm. But does iRacing really help you with that, too? So, I do iRacing a lot. Um, the biggest thing that iRacing is, it's, you know, you can never get, you, you can never replicate the feeling of the G-forces, the loads, you know, and also the obvious variables of just you know actual track condition weather all that stuff it's hard to replicate that the biggest thing that i use iRacing for really is to to get the visuals down mm -hmm. you know you're going into these races you have 20 minutes of practice roughly so if you're going into these races you want to at least know where you're at you need to know what you need to where you need to be where you need to place your car where this marker is where that marker is okay there's a tree here there's this here this is where this ends it, 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 that's the biggest thing I use it for, it, mm -hmm. and the, and it's it helped me out a lot, especially when I went to my first few races, and even going into like 2020 when we had no practice or qualifying. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, we'd just start the race just straight up from loading, <laughs> and right. uh, yeah. you know, a lot of these places I'd never been before. Um, so no practice on a place I've never been, and just fired off with 39 other race cars. Mm -hmm. um, any laps I could get was beneficial. Yeah, so I've done some of the iRacing before, but it was. Uh, you know, the computer would slow down and mm -hmm. it was pixelated and oh, all this yeah. kind of stuff. There's a bunch so, of variables. But now they've actually got it down to where you have the tree is in the proper place and mm -hmm. all the all the markers. I mean, that's good. So yeah. so when you're racing on iRacing, does the car respond to the track pretty similarly to, like I know you're obviously, like you said, you're not going to feel the, the natural effects of it, but like if you put the car on the low groove versus the high groove, does that respond oh, pretty yeah. similarly? Oh, yeah. I mean, same thing with like you look at driving Homestead, for example, on yeah. iRacing. Like they finally, they started, they, they've made some changes to the way the cars drive on there because for the longest time, you know, it was a bottom groove track, even though everybody knows you run the, you run the fence at Homestead. Well, right. now you could do both. But there's still changes that, you know, can be made, and yeah. but it's getting better. Good, good. Okay, so that uh, Stoney says, hey, Sherman, uh, it says, hey, Patrick Swayze. Hmm. <laughs> yes, where's he at? Okay, no, I'm just kidding. I see that Sherman part on there. It got <laughs> yes. me confused. But, uh, yeah, Stoney Ballard, I want to say hey to him and all of his classmates. Yes, um, I was telling Ryan this before. Well, go ahead and finish it. No, I was just, what was you going to say? I thought I turned that off. Oh, I didn't turn this mm -hmm. one off. 
Come it's okay. I'll get, get to it. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Go ahead. I was uh, I was telling Ryan before the show started that uh, Sherman here is Sherman Ballard on YouTube, but his name is they call it. He goes by Stony. Yeah. But he was the one in the. If you watch the movie Six Pack, so we're gonna have to go watch it now. Yeah. He's the one that's Doc. He's the smart, the kid that's the the, the genius of the group. And then uh, we had him in here. We had uh, his brother Clint, and we had Joey Knuckles, who was who's also a NASCAR legend himself. Uh, they were all three in here last week, and yeah. we talked a lot about the movie uh, Six Pack. So that's cool. Yeah, and uh, I think Stoney's going to call here in just a little bit. Heck yeah! And uh, see, so he, he said he had about six questions for you. Okay, so I like we'll, it. We'll, I'll we'll, answer them. Yeah, we'll definitely roll into that. So, where did you grow up? Um, so I'm from the West Coast. I grew up about 20 minutes outside of LA. Um, very much not where you would expect racing, um, but. I mean, I grew up, I liked cars. I liked anything with four wheels and a motor, whether whether it was NASCAR, whether it was IMSA, whether it was off-road trucks, monster trucks, demo derby. I didn't care what it was. As long as it had four wheels and a motor, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that led to me going to my first races at California Speedway Auto Club. Um, and then I eventually found out about Irwindale, and that's where I kind of found out about short track racing and that kids could race, racing Bandolero uh, race cars. And for those who don't know, they're basically third-scale third size scale race cars that run little 30 horsepower Briggs and Stratton lawnmower motors. Um, jumped into that when I was 11. Uh, and that, and, and the, it's the amazing part about that is I was late to the party with that. Mm. Um, I had people that I was racing against that started, around, Oh yeah, I started when I was like four or five and I'm just like, man, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm already behind. Right. Yeah. I remember, uh, they ran those at Charlotte too on the little, mm-hmm. I think it's a little quarter mile or something yep. there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember, Lug- I believe Logano d- did that for one. Oh, yeah. he, he was probably one. There's a lot of kids that are still coming up with the bar- Bandoleras, and, and the Legend cars are, are another thing that's pretty popular. But we have them come through Hickory a couple mm-hmm. times a year, and so that's pretty cool to see them. And it's a lot of young kids, so a lot of people are learning through that uh, sort of the Bandolera process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's oh, pretty cool. Go ahead, caller. With the Bandoleras and, and Hello? the Legend cars are hey there. another thing that's pretty popular, but we have them come through Hickory. Hey, hey, it's, hey, it's Stony. Hey, Stony, how you doing, buddy? Uh, not bad. Uh, do you do you have an echo or anything like that? Not now, I don't. We did. Yeah. Oh, we still do. Back. We still got some echo there. Yeah, cut that. Yeah, a little back track. Yeah. So, what's going on with you this evening? <laughs> uh, turn your radio down or whatever that is playing. Yeah. Let me. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this let me turn it down. Uh, are yeah. we caught up? <laughs> yeah. I, just want, I just want to say, hey, Brian, how you doing? Man, I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, doing great, brother, man. You, uh, you've you been impressing a lot of my students, man. Only 22 years old. Yeah, 22. Yep. Just turned 22 this year. <laughs> <laughs> tell him what, tell wow, Ryan, what, tell him what, what uh, school you're with, Stoney. Excuse me? Tell Ryan what school you're with. Oh, I'm with Parrish Community High School. I'm the automotive teacher there. I was in NASCAR for most of my life, and uh, for some reason, uh, God punished me to make me an automotive teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, though, but I mean, I, I appreciate uh, the kind words. I'm, I'm glad that uh, that's cool that your students kind of know who I am. That I'm, I'm still That's something that's still so foreign to me is people knowing who I am, but yeah. that's uh, that's really cool to hear. No, but it, it's really picking up, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, you know what I usually like to do is, uh, you know, ask my students to, you know, watch, uh, you know, me and David and uh, Bryson have become real good friends. So I try to call in every once in a while. So I use this as a training tool to make them watch or learn more about NASCAR. And then your name came up last week when we were on the show, and I was like, okay. I've got to get this guy in and get him a couple of questions because I grade them on the questions and how their response is. So uh, you're becoming a real popular guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I appreciate that. I mean, it's it's all about just trying to, you know, build your presence, you know, especially in the sport. You know, it's it's hard to get into the sport period. So as long as you could find a way to be different, you know, that's the biggest thing that I had to learn very quickly. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, I, I know a lot about your past and stuff like that. Not for, not that I'm stalking you or anything <laughs> like that, but, I, you know, know about the history of NASCAR and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've got, you know, quite a few questions if you don't mind me yeah. asking you. I'm not grilling you or anything. No, nah, send them. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Okay, um, one of my students asked, what was your most exciting moment on the track? You're most exciting. You know, what made you so energized that you said, yes, I did it? So 
I would say it, it kind of boils down to a few a few very important moments for me. Uh, one of them would be when I won. But between 2018 and 2019, I kind of went through a period where I, you know, the team I was with, I, I lost that ride. You know, they went, they downsized from a three car organization to a two car organization. And, right. you know, for me, I was like, okay, I need to drive a race car. I don't care if it's ARCA or whatever. Like, I, I, I can't, uh, yeah. I can't, I can't focus on driving in, in the ARCA series because that's what I, that's where I was at. I was running the ARCA E series. And, right. And so I was like, I just need to drive something. So I, I luckily, you know, landed some sponsorship, ran a, uh, ended up running a full season of late model racing. And I went that whole off season kind of, you know, yeah, it's business. You know, the, it's a business reason as to why that, you know, situation ended. And I'm still very grateful for that situation that I had. Um, but you get, a, you, you leave that and you kind of still think to yourself, do I, is, is it really that? Like, do I suck? Like, like, mm -hmm. like, do I, like, Second do I, guessing. yeah, do I actually belong here? Mm -hmm. Like I was really at a low point. I just didn't know if I had what it took to me in the sport. Uh, but so we end up going to my home track or Wendell Speedway running late models. My first race back in a year and a half, we showed up to the track, unloaded, we were fast and we went up for the race and we won it. And I think that was oh. a big moment for me. Yeah. you like, yeah, it was a local show. Yeah. It was, you know, what, whatever it is, but it, it reminded me that I could still do it. And that exactly. pushed, yeah, and that pushed me to go and find, you know, find the money I needed to go, you know, make that jump. And that jump ended up being doing, you know, a one-off Xfinity start when I was when I was still 18 uh, for Johnny Davis Motorsports. And um, it, it just it that changed the career path for me. And once I did that Iowa race back in 2019, I remember going into that race so nervous. That that's mm -hmm. another thing. I went into that race so nervous because yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, I reassured myself, okay, I know how to drive, mm -hmm. but do, can I drive at this level? Can I drive at, you know, the NASCAR Xfinity Series level? Because the Xfinity Series is the second highest echelon of stock car racing in North America, in, mm -hmm. in, in stock car racing period. So when I made that, that decision to go do that one-off start, you know, that was me taking a leap and just kind of saying, all right, this is my one, my literal one shot. Like I, right. I, I cannot go into this race, make a fool of myself, because if I do that, I don't belong. Like, this is my only like NASCAR stock car race. Like I had late model races, all that stuff, but I'm saying, you know, at that higher level, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes and, sense. Yeah. and, yeah, you know, so I went into the race, you know, just thinking, all right, I just got to be smart, do my thing. I was just yeah. worried. I was so worried I was going to finish like 30 something, <laughs> 35th, you know, just run in the back. Yeah, like no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes. And you know, and you know, we're running, you know, I, like I said, I made my start with JD JD Motorsports, you know. They're they're a smaller organization and they do a heck of a lot with what they got, and I've had a fantastic uh time over there. Um so, you know, you also have to leverage expectations. You know what I mean? Nobody is expecting me to go out there and run top five and compete for a win. You know, they're just mm -hmm. expecting me to keep defenders on it. Mm -hmm. um, go out there. We ended up running top 15, finished 17th. Ran top 20 in my first ever Xfinity race. And I remember people, you know, all the drivers and crew guys who came up to me after the race. And that was a big moment for me because... For a top twenty for for that for for that organization for you know the smaller teams you know top twenties are what you kind of hope for sure yeah. Um, oh yeah definitely yeah so to leave there running you know like I said having a run where we ran in top fifteen finished seventeenth the only thing that held that car back was me um, just my lack of experience and just to have all the people who came up after the race you know competition directors crew chiefs other drivers come up after me shake my hand that was a moment for me. Not necessarily excitement, but just kind of a real. You got recognized. Yeah, it was a self-realization yeah. moment that I. Yeah, you know exactly, and it, it pulled you back into the realm that this is where you need to be, and uh, it's like you said when you went back to your hometown track, that you went back to your grassroots to show yourself that you could still do it, mm -hmm. and you knew it. You still had it in you, and you went for it, and look how you succeeded. Yep. That and, is an awesome story right there. Nah, thank you. I, I appreciate mean, that, that. No, that shows major motivation that, you know, some people would just quit. And uh, I've seen so many drivers say, okay, well, I'm through with it. I can't deal with it. But you got back into the game 
and you kick the tires and light the fires, and you're still on it right now. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you on a radio show. <laughs> David Ham from 95.5. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, that's something no, good but, for you uh, to, your students to hear too, Stoney. You know, if, uh, if you have a dream and you're dream, he's a dream chaser. Mm-hmm. Go for it. If you want to do it, yeah. you can do it. If uh, he's a dream chaser? Well, that's what his Instagram says. That's why I say that. Or yeah. it's, uh, it's Twitter, one of them. <laughs> yeah. It says dream chaser. Professional. And it Ch- says... Uh, professional dream chaser. Yes. And it says a uh, chicken nugget enthusiast. Oh, yeah. Is the other <laughs> one. That's my favorite. I, th- I, the, I respect that. I got to ask Ryan, yeah, where did the chicken nugget enthusiast come from? Uh, just because I love them. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this. This is a, The tough questions are coming out now. Yeah. Where's the best chicken nugget? Okay. So you so, go to Chick-fil-A, you go to McDonald's. What's your favorite chicken nugget? So... If you're going to get, like, a chicken nugget, right? If you're going to go and get a chicken nugget. And I get flamed for this, but I have my reasoning. Okay. McDonald's is the place to go. Oh, man. Okay. Because Why is that? The, the meat itself is juicy enough. And it's seasoned right. It's got the breading on it. It's crispy, but yeah. it's also soft and chewy. It's got, you know, it's got it all. <laughs> like, I, I mean, <laughs> and I get so upset because people are like, and I love Chick-fil-A. No, I'm not hating on Chick-fil-A. People are like, oh, what about Chick-fil-A nuggets? They're so good. I'm like, yeah, you know, they taste good. They're not nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> They're just a chicken tender that got chopped up. <laughs> I want I want all that meat, whatever yeah. that, whatever, oh, yeah. <laughs> whatever they put Everything. in the McDonald's. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I respect it. We just needed to get that out of there. See, I think Wendy's has a good one. Wendy's is pretty, you know, it's okay. I understand everybody's got their different opinions. We're talking about chicken nuggets. It's great. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stoney, what else did you have? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, speaking of that, you know, talking about chicken nuggets, I'm laughing so hard right now. <laughs> I was curious, and uh, one of my students said, what was the funniest moment that stands out with you, your crew chief, and your crews? You know, what was that moment that you always get together and somebody just messes something up and everybody's laughing? Well, so one of the funniest moments that I had behind the wheel, uh, so it was Daytona this year, actually, the, the August race. Um, we ended up finishing sixth that day, which was a massive result for our team. Um and I remember the big one on the back stretch. And so I, me, my crew chief, and my, my tire guy, we compete online uh, with my buddy, uh, Travis Brown. Uh, he goes by Moonhead on Twitch. Um, and he runs Moon Car. That's what he runs on the on, – and it's just hilarious racing. I mean, everybody just kind of doesn't hold back. They wreck into each other. And they, I, I see the big one. I see, like, 15 cars pile up on the back stretch. I, I, I snake my way through it. I keyed up. I keyed up and I said, "Boys, I was feeling real rattlesnakey right there. Thank God I run Moon Car." Oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right, uh, that is awesome. Which uh, I was asking, going to think about asking another question, but that was hilarious. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> okay, I got to get my uh, chain of thought. But um, you know, you went snaky what? Rattlesnakey. Yeah, okay, I'm going to make a t-shirt like that and yeah. uh, put your name on it. We were feeling a little rattlesnakey that night. Do you ever say uh, plowing like a freight train or any of that kind of stuff? Uh, dump truck. <laughs> yeah, dump yeah. truck. Okay. Yeah, plowing yeah. like a dump truck. Yes. I believe Kyle used oh, to yeah. use that one a good bit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so uh, after after the, you know, because, um, you know, I remember watching the race, and uh, I was, one of my students was, you know, because I teach them all about aerodynamics. Mm-hmm. And they were asking, um, you know, after, you know, because I showed them, uh, you know, a couple of clips and stuff like that. And they were saying, you know, when you were going through the, the crowd, they said, can he see the air? Can you see the air when uh, you're trying to think through stuff like that? <laughs> no, you can't see the air. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is how that can't be understated is how much you feel it, mm-hmm. um, especially when you're by yourself, like, I remember qualifying at Talladega in the fall this year. We qualified 10th. And I remember going down the back straightaway and, like, almost, like, I wouldn't say sawing at the wheel, but, like, you know, it's a super speedway. you got to be real smooth with it. But I'm going down the straightaway kind of, like, kind of playing with the wheel back and forth because there was a slight breeze. Mm, okay. Yeah. A yeah. slight breeze. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason, the thing where, can you see air come about whenever people ask asking Earnhardt? Because he, he, 
I don't remember if he said he could see air. At some point, it came along that, that he they said he could see air. Well, he was just he was so and, good on the super speedways, and you know, you, you, when when the plate racing came in and they became such an aerodynamic track, and Earnhardt succeeded so much, that's was that was mm-hmm. a big question. Can you mm-hmm. see the air because it's an aerodynamic? And thing. he wore open face helmet and, too. Yep. Going back to that, and, I, and I've heard so much about how you can feel it, and I think that would be so amazing. And and you're one of the few that has actually got to experience that and how much it actually. I don't think you know if you haven't been in a race car. Uh, at a track like that and in the draft and not in the draft and, and you know in those circumstances I think it's hard to kind of grasp what that feels like but oh yeah but it's uh, I'm, I'm sure it's amazing how much of a slight effect of something like a small breeze could have I mean it's it's crazy what a slight effect of a car getting close to you mm-hmm. has on you I mean you're in the pack and some guy packs a little bit of air on your left rear and you're getting sideways you mm-hmm. know you're you're, you're kind of having to, to wrestle the car like super speedway racing you know yeah. Like, yeah, there's some gimmies here and there, but, you know, the smart racers, you know, you know, get out of there pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing that, like, I I watch a lot. Like, there's a reason why Dale Jr. was really good. There's a reason why McDowell now is proving to be a very good super speedway racer. Mm -hmm. You know, Danny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, these guys are smart. Right. You know, with how they act, yep. and that's why they finish these races because hip that because eighty percent of the battle is finishing the race. Yeah, I mean that's what I did at Daytona. Yeah. I finished. Right. Like, yeah. I, I, I every speedway race, I'll, I'll tell my team. It's like, all right, the word of the week is vibe, V I B E. Yeah. Hang out. Hang out. Hang <laughs> there out. There you go. I wonder if those guys eat chicken nuggets too. Oh, they do. Or their secret. <laughs> Their secret yeah, you're exactly right. You know, you can't you can't finish the race if you're not uh, finishing. You know, it's like if you get into a, a situation like that when somebody takes air off your spoiler, off your side draft, or if you're running too hard and you run into somebody to make them lose, you know, you're just messing the. It's like a community right at that time, and one person can definitely take away a community for everybody to finish and succeed. No, you're exactly. I love the way you're. Uh, you're exactly a smart racer. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, I, love, I appreciate that. No, 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 I love watching you race and stuff like that. So, um, uh, another question one of my students had is that after the race is over, what is your most cherished moment? You know, when you get out of the car, what do you cherish most about it? Besides <laughs> that, you don't have a load in your pants. So, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, my first thought every time, cause I always make sure I stop by McDonald's after a race <laughs> cause I like have a bad, I have a really bad habit of not eating enough like before a race. Sure. Like I used to have that. I try and like force myself to have like a turkey sandwich or something, mm-hmm. but I, I get to the point after the race where like once I'm done and it's been like 10, 15 minutes after the race, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that'll satisfy that hunger is some nuggets and a <laughs> cheeseburger, some fries and a Dr. Pepper. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> like I'm, I, I kid you not. Like I literally, like I remember getting out of the car one time. We had like a bad race. Like I think we, mm-hmm. like we, had like a mechanical issue. Fell like fifteen something laps down. I remember standing by the car, just kind of bummed, and I, and then they're like, "Well, thanks for sticking in there." I'm like, you know what? As long as I'm, I'm, as, at least I get McDonald's after that's this. Your, com- your yeah. comfort food. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. gonna help. That's gonna help me get through it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that's my nice, uh, sponsor. Uh, punch right there that's what i was thinking look, that needs to be your sponsor. Look, with how much i talk about liking mcdonald's no they got their they got their they got yes. their stuff i'm not going to i'm not gonna take that yeah. <laughs> i'm not that guy <laughs> hey uh hey, um, stony i hope i hope you don't mind me if i ask them a couple more questions yeah go for it are you sure yeah you got, you got time yeah. i didn't want to take up no, too much good. of your time so you know, you, you got a, you know, very interesting and stuff like that, and you know, your perfect smile and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But let's get back to eye racing. Yeah, you know, we- when you do eye racing and stuff like that, yeah. you know, I know it, you know, it helps, you know, a lot of the drivers and stuff like that. But one of my students, you know, because I, I go through with all of my students on this on a daily basis before I get on. One was asking, okay, well, if he does eye racing and it's so simulated, he said, uh, did any situations like that have a situation in real life that you thought it was deja vu? Not necessarily. I think, you know, the biggest thing that iRacing has helped me out with is crash avoidance. Because, you know, when, you, when you're when you iRacing, you know, everybody, nobody's racing with the fear of getting hurt. 
Right. You know yeah. what I mean? You have a reset button mm -hmm. or, you know, if you wreck your area, you're done. You play the next race. Yeah. So people aren't afraid to crash as much on iRacing. So especially during super speedway weeks, I'll do like several different strategies whenever I do a practice race. Um, you know, some I'll just run at the front the whole time. Some I'll ride in the back and others I'll be right in the thick of the pack mm -hmm. and see how it works. There you go. And you know, I think well, one of my uh, students was saying, you know, okay, when you see a car sliding and I racing sideways, have you ever experienced that same thing in real life? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, you see that a bunch of times. I mean, that's, that's one of the good things about iRacing is it's pretty much the closest you can get to the real deal, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to go through my list. You know, I got so many questions. So when I was iRacing, I could just uh, take my car and just like plow right through somebody else's car and it, and it would just reset. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so it's not like, uh, what was it? Um, NASCAR when they came out with one and two off um, Xbox and stuff like that, you could run down pit road and just plow over everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I got hit by Davy Allison on pit road that year, I think they quit doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so one of my other students asked, um, how, does, how does your future look with the team? Because they're all interested. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I put the news out. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the organization that I was with this year. Um, you know, I, I wish them the absolute best going into the next season. Um, but, you know, just like any any racer or any person in any, any business or any trade, you know, there just kind of comes time you need to try something different. And, you know, I'm pretty excited about what's to come. I have some things I'm working on, so hopefully, uh, hopefully things become a little bit more clear soon. And you know, uh, with your with your with your demeanor and everything like that, it reminds me of Alan Kowicki when he first came into racing and stuff like that. He did a lot of um, a lot of own his own um, proprietary, you know, where he wants the direction that he wanted to go. Yep. Yep, and that's so, uh, and that's you know what I'm kind of trying to do, you know. Next year is a new year for me. You know, next year I'm, I, like I said, you know, I, I, and the and the thing that makes me the most content with everything is it's all on it's all my decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm making this decision to change things, and you know, next year is probably going to look a lot different for me, but it's going to open up some really unique opportunities, um, in some different areas and, uh, some new ways and different ways and some old ways, but. You know, there's it, it's it's kind of a neat feeling to have that. Um, I needed it, and uh, I'm just excited to kind of begin building. Hey, Stoney, you no, remember when Alan Kowicki no, won the championship? His uh, his theme song was "I Did It My Way." Mm -hmm. That was the song they kept playing, <laughs> and that's and that's the way I want to do it. You know, I want to do it my way. You know, I'm, I I've done all of my you know all of my marketing all, everything when it comes to negotiating things you know i've had to do it my own way my by myself mm -hmm. because i just yeah, exactly. I, can't, I can't have you know i can't afford to have other people do it for me so yeah i mean as much as i would like to have people you know cover some of these things i just started working with with someone in marketing just recently but you know for the last three four years it's been me myself and i yeah, and you know, and that's what it takes, and uh, you know, that's that's where um, my the, from the bottom of my heart fills out for you because that's how NASCAR actually got started, and you're doing it your way. You know, it's the rough road, but you'd rather get the rough road out of the way, and get it over with, because I've got a heck of a lot of students that love you. They love watching your race. You've got a lot of new fans. That's cool. Uh, some of them, some of them are asking why you want for Christmas. <laughs> um a million dollars me too yeah that's, that's actually a serious question what do you want for christmas man <laughs> look i'm not i'm not picky uh, i'm i and i'm the hardest person to give gifts to because i never i'm never someone that like wants something mm -hmm. right. like uh, like sometimes i just do things out of necessity like one day I just got out. I rolled out of bed and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go buy a new microphone for my streaming setup." And I went yeah. and did that. Yeah. So I did. So it's like, in terms of what I want, uh, you can plug it up again. A McDonald's gift card would be fantastic. But other than that, <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't I don't do. I'm I'm a big gift card guy. Whether it's food gift cards or shopping or gas card or whatever, like perfect. I perfect. Like that that gives me the option. 
because I am so bad at picking things out. Yeah. Gift cards are great. Yeah, yeah. that's all, always, especially like whether you're you're getting a gift. If you're getting a gift card, that's great. If you're, you know, you're not sure what to give someone, gift card. I mean, always, oh, yeah. always the safe option. That's why I started to say McDonald's gift card would be yeah, perfect. Absolutely, mm-hmm. <laughs> they got them in five dollars too. You know. Ryan, don't blame me if you got 400 pounds of chicken McNuggets showing up at your door tomorrow. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's what I want. I need that. It's been a week, man. I need some nuggets to rest my soul. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, Comfort for you. I, I, I'll, I'll let, um, let y'all get back to the podcast. I'm still going to be on here. But uh, uh, Ryan, I definitely want to say thank you for uh, you know what you're doing uh, you know for uh, Franiel Sendosius. And uh, that's a um, that's a good project that um, you know I really believe in, and I can't believe you came this far with all that that structure and everything that you had to uh, accomplish and uh, make it through. So my heart goes out to you, your family. You've got a solid family. I love your background. I love what you're talking about, and I hope to meet you sometime. Yep. And uh, if you want to know how to uh, win Daytona 500, give me a call three days before you go racing. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a secret there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but yeah, I appreciate that. a secret there to help uh, Ernie Irvin, Sterling Marlin, and Earnhardt get there. And I believe in you, so you can get there, too. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, like I said, I uh, appreciate all the kind words. Um, definitely goes a long way. Yeah. Hey, thank oh, yeah. You. Well, I'll definitely see you uh, hopefully soon, and you have a Merry Christmas to your family, you know, and uh, everybody. We love and miss you, David. Hey, Patrick Swayze over there, Bryson. <laughs> uh, we love you, and uh, I hope to see you soon. All right, Stoney. It's, it's been good to hear from you. Hey, great to hear from you guys. Yeah, nice buddy. show. Thank you. Thank you, man. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye-bye. All right, so, yes, Stoney was also on the uh, – if you saw the picture of Davey Allison whenever he won in 1987 – he won the Talladega, his first race in 1987 that he ever won. Stoney was the one with his arms up in the air, sitting on the car, sitting on the hood really? of the car. Yeah, that was That Stoney. is awesome. Yeah, and his, bro- his other brothers were on the car with him, too. That's so cool. And that was when they all piled up on the yep. car. They recreated that uh, last year, I believe it was. Yep. And, uh, and one of the teams did that. And that was very cool. So uh, we're going to take a quick break and uh, play some commercials, and we'll be right back to Ryan Vargas here on Racing Roots. With ham, don't go anywhere. With more than 20,000 students, Iredell Statesville schools rank among the 20 largest school districts in North Carolina. Our teachers represent a wealth of knowledge, with the average teacher in our district having 15 years of teaching experience. Iredell Statesville schools' innovative approach blends a one-to-one technology initiative with collaborative best practices and a hands-on approach to learning. In addition to traditional school settings, the district provides a wide range of exciting educational opportunities through our choice programs, specifically designed for unique student needs. No matter your age, your background, or your personal goals, there's a place for you in the Iredell Statesville Schools. At Banner Drug, we are proud to say we have been caring for our patients in our community since 1996. Our pharmacy offers a personalized customer service experience you expect from a locally owned store. To help you with your prescriptions, all four Banner Drug locations can deliver your medication right to your door. You can call in your prescription refill order, or better yet, use the
And we're back to Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 AM, 92.9 FM. And uh, we're also streaming live on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, and that's about it. Anywhere else you want to go. Uh, if, you, if you're missing out on the show, seeing us on video, then uh, that's your own problem because you've got plenty of choices to find it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're everywhere. But uh, we prefer if you go to the YouTube, DHAM I Am. And uh, also, thanks for listening. If you're listening on the radio while you're driving down the road, don't go to the YouTube because you, it's hard to do that and drive at the same time. <laughs> but uh, th- anyway, thanks for tuning in. But the reason I say YouTube is because you got better camera angles and such. Mm-hmm. Is, is so, And uh, we can get to see Ryan Vargas here live in the Randy Brand studio with us. And if you'd like to follow Ryan, you can go to his Instagram. He is RTRV23. Instagram, that is. And on, YouTube, and on Twitter, he is at Ryan Vargas underscore 23. And what else do you have? You got uh, you got a page on Facebook oh, yeah. too. Yeah, Facebook Ryan Vargas. That's my normal mm-hmm. page. And then you have a uh, TikTok, uh, which is a big one for me. Uh, Ryan Vargas underscore twenty three. Same thing as Twitter. Okay, I'll have to follow you on the TikTok. I don't know that I have yet. I may have because okay. I see it on. I saw it on Instagram, and sometimes I'll jump over and then follow you on there too. Mm. But uh, mine's DM I am, which is what everything is. I got <laughs> so, you. <laughs> Yeah, but I was telling you a little bit about the uh, the video that I did here in this this studio. It's old buildings here since 1889, and uh, I'll put that on on my DMI am Instagram. I mean on the uh, uh, TikTok. Mm-hmm. But I'll have a history hit TikTok as well, history ham. But that's another story. <laughs> we won't get into the history stuff. But uh, my my buddy Scott Travis is down in Florida. Tuned in. He says hello from the world's famous world's most famous beach. And nice. he, he also mentioned that we need to get down there and go to Volusia Speedway this weekend. That's a big trip to make on the whim. <laughs> it is, isn't <laughs> From it? From up here. <laughs> About eight-hour drive, so yeah. yeah, you could do it in a, in a half a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, really. yeah. And uh, my cousin James McCorkle, Jim, there's tuned in, and he says he wish he would have kept up with the racing. He did. He actually worked out at the uh, Home and Moody shop oh, okay. for That's a while. Cool. Yeah, so he's been around for a while there. That's awesome. What else you got, Bryson? Well, we have a question, if it's a good time for a question. Perfect. Stop. This is uh, coming in from Mike Bear. Uh, he says, good evening, and he wants to know, uh, what is your favorite and least favorite track that you've raced at? Um, <laughs> so my favorite track is Iowa Speedway. Love that place. Love the facility. Um, it's, a cr- it's a crime. We don't go there in any of the NASCAR Top Series anymore. Mm. It's one of the best circuits um, I've not been to that one. It is a fun, fun racetrack. Seven, uh, seven eighths of a mile, multi groove. You could run the wall, or you could run the bottom. Like it is, every lane is usable there, and I think that is the most beautiful thing in a racetrack because mm. any lane is fast too. I agree. Mm-hmm. That's yep. like that is what you want in a racetrack. Um, my least favorite track, man. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, name any names <laughs> but um okay well maybe go with those style you gotta um favorite i like well see the thing is i like places that are that are hard to drive mm-hmm. because they have age or they are technical and stuff mm-hmm. i don't like places that are hard to drive just because they're shaped weird mm. like i like right yeah yeah like i it's especially because it limits you know it limits the uh amount of lanes you could use it limits them right. you know the kind of moves you can make um and I would just, you know, I'd rather go to a place, like I mentioned, like Iowa, where you can run the wall or the bottom or the middle, wherever. Same thing. I mean, honestly, I think we're kind of in the Charlotte Motor Speedway renaissance right now. That track is perfect. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. the perfect mile and a half racetrack. I think the racing this year was phenomenal. In all series, it, it was really good. I mean, especially, mm-hmm. and I think the cup race, the Coke 600, a lot of people have viewed that for years as probably one of the most, I mean, it's the longest race. A lot of people say it's the most boring race, um, but this year... If you don't watch the Coke 600 next year, you're crazy because yeah. that was probably one of the better races we had on a mile and a half this year, and it was all at Charlotte, and it was totally unpredicted, and, and it raced uh, totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, once once these mile and a halfs, you know, a lot of uh, a, a lot of times NASCAR moves away from these tracks when they get a little age, but when they get a little age, they get a little character, and that's what builds a good race. Yep. Um, so like you said, we're moving into that point with a lot of tracks. Um, so it's exciting and, and that's pretty cool. Cool point. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So the one thing about Charlotte, I too, I was thinking about, uh, do you like the Roval? I love the Roval. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm a big, I am a very pro Roval guy. I like the Roval a lot. I love the Oval. Um, it's as uh, selfishly, I still wish there was two Oval races and one, ro- and then still a mm-hmm. Roval right, because yes. it, because they're both that good. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just. And they did a real good job with both. I mean, the Roval has definitely has its place on the calendar now. You sure. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it is the perfect playoff road course. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think you could do a playoff race at any other road course mm-hmm. and keep the same excitement that you would for the Roval. I agree. Because if you took, say, that same thing to Coda, you know, that's still a four-and-a-half-mile road course or whatever, how long it is. And then you have Road America. I mean, granted, they're both very phenomenal racetracks, put on mm-hmm. phenomenal racing. But in terms of getting a stadium-type race stadium type atmosphere at a road course the roval does it perfect how do you feel mm-hmm. about dirt racing and love it okay i love it i think and honestly i think the bristol dirt race this year was had it not been marred by um rain mm-hmm. for that cup race i think that race would have been a lot higher on people's like like mm-hmm. like like list right exactly because honestly i was there in person and that was one of the best cup races i've watched mm-hmm just it, plain it, and simple. It Watch. was very racy. Yeah, yeah it, it was really racy. They did a really good job this year with the track prep, I thought. Yep. Like, there was a lot less dust. I, again, I wasn't at the first one, but I was there for this one. Yeah. And another thing, too, I mean, I hate that it's at the expense of a Bristol race. But yeah. at the same time, you can't justify having a spring race and not having many people in the grandstands. Mm-hmm. True. And I went to that spring race this year. And granted, it's still Bristol, but there was still a lot of people there. A lot, a lot, a lot more people than there's been at most spring races. Yeah, well, I think the last time, I mean, pre-COVID 2019, you have the spring race, and they literally didn't sell tickets in the turns yep. because the attendance was so low. And then you throw a dirt race, you can argue whether the first dirt race was good or bad, or, or how it raced, and you mm-hmm. know the, the dust was bad. It, it hadn't rained or anything. Um, but that's something, I mean, NASCAR hasn't raced on dirt in, what, 70 years almost? Or it probably isn't that long. <laughs> but, uh, it was like 50. But 50, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> adding up. Uh, but but it's been so long, and so it's going to take a while to figure that back out. And I think this year, like you said, was a good example of how they've kind of figured it out. And I think it's only going to get better. I, I think it's, yeah. you know. And they did a good job thing. with adding, They instead of making it uh, the same amount of banking all the way from the bottom to the top, they actually added yeah. banking like two degrees to that's the top. Important versus the yeah. bottom okay and it, and you saw a lot of guys running the wall mm-hmm. which was fun mm-hmm. it, it was a fun watch I, I thoroughly enjoyed it as you know the race fan in me right. loved watching it and i it's made me i'm actively trying to sell the truck race mm-hmm. for bristol yeah, because of, i want uh, to do it bristol yeah. that got me thinking about uh, chris boucher i keep in touch with him he was on the show and, mm-hmm. and he'll call in every once in a while and i remember him telling me he's like i wish they wouldn't taken the two uh one of my bristol races away to to make it a dirt track, but I think he ended up winning there Bristol, didn't he? Win wasn't that where he won? He won. He won, he won on the, the concrete. Pavement. He won on the yeah. pavement. On the pavement. Kyle yeah. Busch won the dirt race this year. Right. Yep. Yes. Off of a last lap crash, which was again so, exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he winning on the concrete. On the, yeah. Yeah, and his only win of the year. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So Lena Jenks says he's an all around racer and, and uh, sounds like he's. He likes almost every track he goes to. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. I mean, I, I mean, I. Mm-hmm. The end of the day, you know, every racetrack has their characteristics that make them cool. Mm-hmm. You know, right. There's some that are significantly less cool, in my opinion, but there's also a majority that I think have their strengths. I mean, like, I'm gonna be honest here. I, I think. I mean, one track. I'm just gonna name drop right now. A lot of track that gets a lot of flack that I will go to bat for in a good way is New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. New Hampshire is one of the most fun racetracks we go to on the schedule, and it produces some of the best racing. Like, it got such a negative reputation for the last few years, and I'm, like, watching yeah. these races, and I'm like, this is sick. Like, yeah. <laughs> like this yeah. is awesome. So what do you like best? Because there's not – I mean, it's it's pretty much flat. You know, yeah. I'm sure as you're driving it, you notice the banking, but there's obviously banking there. But what makes that, as a driver, what makes that f- so fun to drive on as, as a flat track? Because I know it's got mm-hmm. multiple grooves, and you see a lot of the guys sort of cut the corner, yeah. especially going off a of turn two. So how does – as a driver, what's that like? Yeah, and that's the fun part is there, there is multiple grooves. You know, you can run that top, that the third groove. You can run the middle. You can run the bottom. Ideally now, like, then they did. And that was one of the few places that I think really did benefit when they just started doing the, the resin stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was one of the tracks that, I, in my opinion, it kind of worked. Um, there's always a level of how much you want to put. And I think they at one point they did a good amount. And I thought it was good. But this year I don't think they did any. But it was actually really good in terms of the race line. Um but like you mentioned, like cutting across the apron, diving it low, 
sending in on somebody and trying to clear them like that's yeah. it's a it's a pretty fun and racy racetrack um and, I, and that like i mentioned i think that's just one of the places that gets a lot of flack which it shouldn't totally random spurt by me but i was just like oh, no, i like it that's good do we, do we still race there twice i mean we once okay because yeah. when i went we went there twice a year <laughs> yep and it was like the the track that you would you get off the airplane, you get in a bus, and you go for another two hours through the country, yep. and all of a sudden, there's a track out yep. in the middle of nowhere, it seems like. <laughs> yep. yep. But it was always a fun place to go to. All right. So what else, Bryson, did we have on here? Well, Let's see. Uh, well, we'll say hey to a couple of people. We'll say hey to uh, James, who uh, is tuned in, James S. Uh, you mentioned Linda Jinx. Uh, Jan Valson, we were trying to uh, say hello there. Uh, and uh, Dickie Dennis okay. tuned in. Yeah, Dickie Dennis is... Uh, 2014 infamous fence climber that oh, stopped the Richmond race. That's him? That's him, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah we, <laughs> that he is, is awesome. Our, uh, he, he's our number one supporter, and, and we love Dickie. Dickie's a good friend. Uh, <laughs> he, he's a he's a cool guy and probably got the coolest story. It's, it's yeah. pretty, pretty He's neat. definitely got a story. And, and, a, mm-hmm. and a reputation at that. That's awesome. Yeah, he can never go back to Richmond International Speedway again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ever, in, or in not even to the property. <laughs> oh, man. But he has been across the street. Just don't tell anybody that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> during the race. Like, oh, man. Yes. So, whatever your, um, what what got you, let's just say this. So, you were raised in, you were born and raised out in California and uh, not too far from Los Angeles, mm-hmm. which I know they have uh, Pomona. It's out, not too far from there, the, yep. the drag race yep. and stuff. But you pretty much liked any kind of racing. Oh, yeah. I remember, I mean, the first thing my parents ever took me to was Monster Jam. Mm. I mean, I loved that. I'm a big Grave Digger fan still to this day. Yeah. I mean, I plan on making a drive to Kill Devil Hills to go see the to go see Digger's Dungeon out there. Cool. Right. I mean, I'm like I like I said, I geek out with stuff like that. I, I love anything. Like I said, four wheels and a motor. I just went, I took my, uh, my girlfriend came down my birthday weekend. I took her to the NHRA races. Because we had nothing planned. And I was like, yeah, that's in town. We could probably get in. Like, mm. And so I take her down there. And I actually know... Uh, like fun fun fact, my I know one of the announcers for the NHRA, uh, Jason Galvin, and um, we he texts me. He says, "Hey, you're here. You know, if you want, we can. I could take you down to the to the Christmas tree." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Oh, yeah. So I'm standing in the middle, and it was during the top fuel. Wow. Like that. Yes. I have the video, and it like you could see how much it shakes the phone. Like I'm like. I mean, it it it, it is yeah. strong on your chest. My girlfriend's hair picked up. Oh man, that's from how crazy, loud it was. Wow, yeah. from all the from all the pressure coming from the from mm-hmm. the from the cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something I, that impressed me about the drag racing. And I had people tell me before because I've been to so many NASCAR races and Jack mm-hmm. and Dinda, but then they said you need to go to a drag race and you can actually feel it in your chest. Mm-hmm. And I did, and I got to stand down there, not in between the pylons yeah. or whatever, but I was on to to the side. And man, you can feel it, and it, I've got a lot of video of that. Too. It's I need to be, and I, it's one of those things. Like, it's I, I consider it like this might be a horrible analogy, but I consider it like the golf of motorsport. Mm. Golf has a lot yeah. of fans, yeah. But it, but for those who don't know it, think it's the most boring thing in the world. Oh, that's perfect. I'll, yeah. uh, that's a perfect analogy. Be, but but yeah, if you sure. actually go, like I guarantee you, if you took me to a golf event, I'd probably have a great time. And it seems like everybody who goes to those things have a great time. Yeah. But mm-hmm. same thing with NHRA. You go to an NHRA event, you're going to leave there stoked that you right. went. And it's yeah. one of those things where you don't have to stay like the whole time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a bunch of vendors. You can walk around. You can leave early. I mean, there's like, it's, it's a fun thing to just go watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, I recommend staying the whole time, but it's like... Yeah. It's not like a NASCAR race where it's a continuous thing going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a very fun watch. See, the NHRA does a program and and it's uh, sort of like a career development thing. And and we did that with school. And so this was like my first time really being at a at a drag racing event when they do the four wides at Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that I thought was cool was uh, they sort of have an open pit situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anybody that wants to go can kind of walk through the pits and and you know just check out what's going on. You don't have that at like a NASCAR sanctioned event like that. So mm-hmm. Um, to be my first event and to get to see all the behind the scenes stuff to me was super cool and, and really interesting. And yeah, I think that's, that's another cool thing. I, but NHRA, I, I, I think it's cool. I, I agree with that though. That's, uh, mm-hmm. the golf of motorsport. And you gotta think NHRA has a lot of fans. They do. I mean, yeah. they get they pack like, the places out. They really Yeah, do. they pack those places out and it also gets like, I think it's like anywhere between 800 and a million viewers yeah. every like yep. broadcast. It's mm-hmm. like. I mean, it's got its viewers. It's it's yeah. one of the high. It's one of the leading motorsports in the U.S. Mm. Yeah, the first one I went to, I went down and met John Force, mm-hmm. and like got my son's picture taken with him, and my sister was with me, and 
you know, and then the next time I went, well, we were able to do the same thing again. And it was like, wow, okay, this is cool. Mm-hmm. You can't really do that as, as much in NASCAR. It'd be nice if you could, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Too much, too much going on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the Linda Jinx is uh, one of our listeners. She says, I think you're, uh, the, the people, hold on, hold on. Let's see. I have to proofread this. That's what Bryson's doing. Sorry. Good morning. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, thanks for tuning in there, Linda. Appreciate that. And Dickie Dennis, what I was telling you about, if you watch some of the videos, you'll see Dickie Dennis. Uh, they, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of the guy that climbed up on the fence. Yeah. And then they, that, you know, stopped the race and some, some guys changed. And uh, he throws his arms up in the air because he realized that he had left his cell phone sitting down there. He wanted to get a selfie with yeah. the four car oh, passing by. <laughs> what, was, what was it? Alan Bestwick, what did he call him? He called him, uh, he called, called him something. It, it, I think it was idiot was the word. Yeah, you might have called him an idiot. <laughs> Alan Bestwick was pissed off about that. <laughs> yes. it, it's funny to go back and watch it now, but it's, uh, you know, the, something uh, yeah, else. I could see it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you'll have that, I guess. All right, so you're, we're going to go back to California. You raised, um, who was your, let's say, your biggest influence into getting into motorsports? I mean, I know you said you went to a Munster Jam. Was that like your dad took you or? Yeah, I mean, my dad was definitely a big, you know, mm. the biggest thing when I with my dad, um, he is one of the most competitive individuals ever. Mm-hmm. Like, and like when it comes to like competing and stuff like that, he wants, he wants the best. What did he do for a living? Uh, he's, he's a construction worker. He's an iron worker. Mm-hmm. Um, but he grew up, you know, the high school athlete, like he was, you know, big time in high school and stuff. And he's still got that mojo in him. And I, I remember my first time ever driving a Bandolero, we get done testing and, um, we leave the track. We, we, we test that orange show speedway, fantastic quarter mile oval, by the way, in California, mm-hmm. orange show speedway, please look it up. It's like if you took Bowman gray and gave it banking, um, mm-hmm like a little bit of banking it's still relatively flat um we we leave the track and my dad tells me he's like all right so uh we have the whole drive home 45 minutes um we have two choices you can do we we can you know go to k1 speed on the weekends or go go karting with some of your buddies have fun but you know obviously you focus on just school and do your thing and we'll you figure out what you want to do or we do racing Mm. and you know we do this you know we give it an honest effort but if we do it we're going to make you a champion and mind you two hours ago i hit the wall my first ever lap on in a a race car right yeah i hit the wall (laughs) and then i started then we fixed it thankfully it was just a spindle we broke i we got in a bandolero you could fix that thing in like 15 minutes um but so we fixed that and i go back out we practice and i'm and i'm already got the fire in me and i was like all right but yeah you got 45 minutes to kind of think about this and you know when we get home we'll talk about it and mm. it didn't take me five minutes mm. before I said I wanted to race. Nice. And Great. sure enough, you know, first year, 2012 was my first year. I was 11 turning 12, won the California State Championship. 2013 won the California State Championship. 2014 won the California State Championship and tied for the national title. Won a couple track uh, track championships. Got to think it was like seven, six or seven track records by the time mm. we were done racing Bandoleros. Um, and that was very much us kind of thinking all right you know we, we've definitely excelled here now mm-hmm. we got to move up moved up to street stocks did well there won won some races when i was 14 racing against guys who were you know two three four times my age at the time mm-hmm. um and then you then we ended up getting an opportunity to go run late models for david usherman he unfortunately passed away last year mm-hmm. um first car owner and uh he mm-hmm. took an opportunity with me he saw me win my first street stock race and i don't know what what got in his head that street stock would translate to a super late model but he said oh you want to drive it and i'm like okay yeah and it's a big jump it? yeah but mm-hmm. first first race out we were running top five stuff like that yeah. ended up getting myself caught up in a caught up in an incident but that yeah. we started a, a real great partnership where we you know got a bunch of really good results ran a lot of races never got that win my first year in late models but then the second year we started winning a, winning a good handful all right good good for you that sounds like you so you've already you've proven yourself i mean you you've been racing now for is it 10 years this is my this was my 10th year yeah okay yep and so who would you say was your biggest influence then uh my old uh, late model crew chief uh, his name's charles price okay. um he instilled in me a lot of what i know today uh mm-hmm. charles was actually a mechanic formerly at rcr uh for a little while um and he instilled in me kind of the whole mindset of how i need to be as a driver i need to be able to say what what the car needs when i come in 
mm-hmm. you know, and that's, it's still something you're, I mean, as a driver, you're consistently learning and trying to figure out new things every single day, every single race. Um, but he instilled in me, you know, how I work on the car, how I, you know, go about the diagnosing the car. And there are still, like I said, I've, there's still a lot of things for me to learn, but him doing what he did, I mean, he taught me the hard way, you know what I mean? Like me and him, we butted heads at times too, but at the end of the day, like I have the most respect for the guy mm-hmm. and I still try and check in with him every time I'm down in California. Uh, he's still, uh, spearheading a very successful program out there. Um, but he is the reason why we, we have, why we run races, mm-hmm. you know, okay. like yeah. I, he took what I knew as a driver and kind of like, all right, wrangle that in. Mm-hmm. And then he also knew how to wrench a race car. Yeah. And so that's, he, and he's a very good driver himself. So okay. it, that was a big thing for me too, was having a driver, a guy who drove yeah. to help work on the car. So you're able to, you, you do all that. You do everything, right? I try to. Yeah. You, you work on the cars yeah. too. Yeah. I, I, uh, this past year I went to the shop anywhere from two to three times a week mm-hmm. to help clean the car, work on the car, help set up, whatever, whatever yeah. was needed. I tried to do. Okay. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, these guys, I mean, when you're at the Xfinity level, these guys kind of know what they're doing. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I let them do what they what they need to do. But if there's, like, an extra hand needed, like, okay, I need to help fab something or I have to help clean something or help take out a seat or take out or move X part from this car and take it over to the X, X cart, mm-hmm. you know, fine. Okay. Um, but it helps me better understand what goes into these things. And whenever we're on the pull down or something, I'll... I'll watch, you know, I'll try and take in a little bit about what we're doing. I'll ask what kind of changes we're doing. And, mm-hmm. um, it's just important to me. And same yeah. thing when we like, same thing with like super speedway racing too. You know, we work on the dyno and stuff and I'll watch the, you know, pull it, the, the, the sheet from, from each pull and kind of see where the, you know, mm-hmm. the power band was, you yeah. know, where I need to shift mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's just, it's about learning everything I can. I'm well, not, and I'm not saying I know everything. No, anyway, no like that's great. I mean, with me being an engine guy, you don't see that enough, in my opinion, mm-hmm. of drivers coming in and getting that into what what they're doing. And so that's great. You have to. I mean, yeah. and the thing is, like, I, like I said, I was very close to not being in the sport at all mm-hmm. for the for for quite a while. Like sure. I, 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 had I not had the opportunities that I had in 2019, I wouldn't be sitting at this desk right now. Mm-hmm. I'd probably be having a some sort of media job somewhere or marketing yeah. job you something. might still be out in california too so. yeah i might i might I might have had to so, move back to california so after uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about that we're going to see what what brought you out here and when you decided to move out here so mm-hmm. we'll be right back to racing roots with ham and ryan vargas hey y'all it's time to get serious about cooking for Schools rank among the 20 largest school districts in North Carolina. Our teachers represent a wealth of knowledge, with the average teacher in our district having 15 years of teaching experience. Iredell Statesville Schools' innovative approach blends a one-to-one technology initiative with collaborative best practices and a hands-on approach to learning. In addition to traditional school settings, the district provides a wide range of exciting educational opportunities through our choice programs, specifically designed for unique student needs. No matter your age, your background, or your personal goals, there's a place for you in the Iredell Statesville Schools. Since 1972, Tilly Harley-Davidson has lived...
With a new pair of gloves, they have just about every glove you can think of for the job you're working on. Over 5,000 hardware items in stock to get whatever job you have done. Check them out on Facebook, Little Shavers Woodshop, or better yet, stop by 3301 Salisbury Highway. Give them a call, 704-872-3148. Little Shavers Woodshop. All right, we're back to Racing Roots with Ham, 550 AM, 92.9 FM, WAME Radio. And we are also live on DHAM I Am on YouTube. So if you'd like to tune in there and see us live in the Random Rain studio, you can do that. And you can see Ryan Vargas, who is in with us, as a 22-year-old chicken nugget enthusiast, <laughs> a dream chaser, <laughs> content creator in NASCAR and Xfinity Series driver and iRacer. I forgot that part, but uh, <laughs> man. But you do a lot of stuff, and I've watched you for the past uh, – at least the past year or so. And I've followed you on Instagram and Twitter. And I haven't, like Stoney said, i not stalked you out or anything, but I've been impressed at, at your how well you do with your marketing and, and all the stuff that you do yeah. and, you, and your attitude. Mm-hmm. That the attitude is everything, I think, you know, and not letting negative stuff get to you mm-hmm. and keeping a positive and going and moving forward. Mm-hmm. And that's inspiration to everyone else that's trying to do what they what yeah. they, you, you're doing well and i mean i'm just one of those people that like you know i could never know somebody and you know i i'm one of those people that you know once still still even if i don't know this person or don't know who these people are or don't know uh, x fan mm-hmm. you know i want people to have a positive thought about me yes. you know i want yeah i want whenever i you know am done racing you know whether it's in whether it's in 10 15 20 years you know I want whatever that is to for people to end that and say, you know, he was a good guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was mm-hmm. a good guy. Like not only can he do, you know, driving, but you know, mm-hmm. he was just a good dude. Yeah. That's a, that's very important too in life and, and older that you get, you know, I'm 51 now. So I realized that more in my later years to, to basically it's like this. I've, I ran into people that I met that were nice. And every time I saw them, they were like super nice to me. And you remember that yeah. later on in the years. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's – and that's what's helped me get some opportunities too. I mean, it's like – and mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I act that way to get opportunities. That's, that's totally the wrong way to look at it. Yeah. But, like, you don't know who you're meeting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I – Oh, yeah. Could you, be anybody. Yeah. You don't know who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I mean, like, I, I just the other day, I was, like, just a, f- a few weeks ago, I was talking to someone. They're like, yeah, you, you know, you let my kids sit in your race car. You know, mm-hmm. and it's just like, oh, wow, like, and we're yeah. talking now. So it's like, yeah. it's a big deal, you know, when you're able to make an impact like that, mm-hmm. you know, as a positive impact. And that's, that's what I hope to do a lot of the time. And, you know, that's how I do about, that's how I do a lot of my business, you know, mm-hmm. whenever I, you know, cause it's both a blessing and a curse, you know, being able to do my own marketing, doing all this stuff. Cause it's like, it's a lot, mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a lot. You're trying to find a bunch of money to go race in the night. And mm-hmm. like I said, the second highest level of motorsport in America right now, sure. yeah. you know, yeah. that, that takes a lot to mm-hmm. just even be in that point. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. you know, I'm having to, you know, check in with these people and it's like, it's difficult because, you know, you put your, you, you have to find the right people to work with you on that stuff. But a lot of the times that, that costs money and, and I don't have that kind of money to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have the kind of money to pay someone to manage me or sell sponsorship for me. Yeah. You know, like well, I said, just recently I started working with someone, but, um, that's how it's been this whole time. Mm-hmm. Well, and fortunately so, you're able to do that yourself too. You're yeah. good at it. Yeah. Very good at it. And, um, uh, Sherman said he had a question, another question. He says, uh, or Stoney, mm-hmm. he says, Stoney's kids want to know what is your favorite music? So I like all kinds of music. That's another thing. Um, like my music will range from, you know, will range from, you know, electronic music, like, like dubstep, mm-hmm. I guess you could say, um, anywhere from that to like country, to rap, to rock, mm-hmm. to metal, to whatever. Like I, I like all kinds of music. Yeah. I've kind of grown to like all kinds of music. Like That's my, good. uh, another driver in the NASCAR experience is Brad Perez. Um, he took me to a metal show. I don't listen to metal. <laughs> Like it's like screaming, oh, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't listen to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't really but I went to the show, like kind of with the like, you know what? Live music with some buddies. It'll be some fun. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I've been to like seven more since then. Really? And that mm-hmm. was earlier this summer. Like that was June. I like, think being musically diverse is actually one of the coolest things ever because 
like when like I'm kind of the same way like my playlists are so screwed up like mm-hmm. it's so many different things and and there's some there's certain kinds of music like I've never I've not, never been into the dubstep and that kind of thing but I've never really listened to it either so I don't really know what it's all that's about but yeah like my playlist will go from like John Party to Trippy Red and I think that's probably the first time Trippy Red has been set on 92.9 <laughs> yeah <I'm sure. laughs> I don't know who it is but yeah that sounds wild <laughs> It sounds pretty crazy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Danny and Gray's cards here in, in Statesville. He says, hey, Ryan, seen you at Martinsville. Heck yeah. And uh, was on the Reddit Reddit car. Oh, it, heck yeah. It was awesome. He said, I still haven't gotten the uh, hero card from you that yet there, though, bud. <laughs> I think I owe you a hero card then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe he's he's right here in Statesville. I'll have to find yeah. that out. Maybe you yeah. can tell I'll us have exactly to ma- where. I'll have to mail one out. Yeah. I think, we, got, I think we have a few left. I, I got mm-hmm. like... I got a whole box of what was left of my hero cards from this year mm-hmm. so I can distribute them. Yeah. And it is like this thick and I think it has like from like four different cars. Oh, okay. Yes. I should have had you bring one or two yeah. so I can and sign them for it. So, uh, that'd be cool. Um, Linda, says, she says, if you could drive any number car, what would it be? 23. As we say, 23. 23. That's my number. Yeah. That's just been my number my whole career. Yeah. He said, Danny said, I appreciate that, Ryan. Yep. Very good. And uh, James says we might have to change you to uh, Dream Catcher instead of the Dream uh, Chaser because you're catching your dreams. We ain't there yet. You're you're getting there. (laughs) We're getting there. Speaking of that, though, what is your dream that you want to keep going into Cup Series? I mean, you want to? My dream is to drive race cars for a living and keep having fun. There you go. I mean, if I'm if I'm racing trucks for the for my life. Yeah. But I'm, you know, making an honest living and I'm able to support a family and, you know, still love what I do. Then absolutely, if I'm running Xfinity Mm -hmm. and I'm able to support a family and love what I do if I'm able to run cup and mm-hmm. do that exact same thing like heck yeah okay. like I want to drive cars and I want to mm-hmm. continue having a presence within the sport I want to have an impact on the sport you know I'm trying to take a lot of roles now in the media side where I'm going to have you know hopefully some opportunities to be in front of a camera more you know that's what mm-hmm. I like doing um so you know the dream like I said the dream is to be able to drive race cars have fun support a family and you know whatever comes with it comes mm-hmm. with it all right well good well we do this show every monday evening so mm-hmm. if you're ever well if you're not i racing i was gonna say you're welcome to come anytime <laughs> you, want. You, know, you can be in front of the camera and on in front of the microphone and all that kind of stuff it's true yep yeah it's like bryson does he comes every week he's just 17 by the way if you you're 17 yeah i'm 17 and you're way taller see this is not fair man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like i grew up like i like i got to like seventh grade and i like got tall and i was like the tallest in my friend group i was like heck yeah man i'm gonna be yeah. the tall guy yeah. and then i stopped oh well well a see, lot of race car drivers are shorter so. that's true that that is but it's not i don't feel like when when i go to school and stuff i don't feel like i'm tall because i've got a lot of friends and a lot of people that i know that are like way taller than me that's scary but like yeah i mean they're big dudes but like mm-hmm. when i when i first came up into like middle school like sixth seventh grade like you said like everybody was short to me and i was like i was like tall and now my best friend he was uh he's always been a short kid always been shorter mm-hmm. than me and now he's like pretty much taller than me so yeah it's kind of weird but well, i would I, well if it means anything i would have never thought you know uh, keep doing this stuff and keep having fun with it. That's that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's he's wearing boots too, so that yeah. make yeah. true. Get yeah, that boots. boosts me up. A oh man, yeah. that's a good. I, uh, I was so I was teammates with Jeffrey Earnhardt um, oh, yes. for the past two years, except for this year. Um, and he's a bit, obviously he's a big hunter guy, hunting guy, big mm-hmm. catfishing guy, goes mm-hmm. noodling, and it is like. Cause me and him are total opposite people, mm. but he, I consider him one of my good friends, mm. you know? And that's, that's the funny thing is like, like I mentioned, you know, you don't like, you look at Jeffrey Earnhardt, then you look at me. We are not yeah. like, like <laughs> the way we act, the way we talk, yeah. the way, like that our interests, they do not align, but we're like, we're just good buddies. And like, I always joke with him. I'm like, your hobby is literally like having to grab a fish by like its mouth. Yes. That doesn't <laughs> sound fun to me. And, but he always comes with like the most decked out boots. And I'm like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I could see it. Yeah. Yeah, you need to get you some. There you go. Get I like Jeffrey your hat. Hook so you up. Yeah. Nice hat. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. We you want to talk nice about hats. the hats? Yeah. And... Um. My. I. So I. My, I just. I have my own merch site yeah. and stuff like that. I call it the Rhino Gang brand. Yeah. Um. I. I work with a bunch of very uh, fantastic artists. Um. Lefty Designs. Uh, Harris Lulu Creative. Um. Emily Butler. Um. And a bunch of others. Um. Who have done some fantastic, fantastic work. Uh. For me. 
and Harris actually designed this hat. He actually designed your hat over there too. So, mm -hmm. um, he's a very talented guy. And, uh, I, I always try and make sure that if I put merch out, it's something that I would wear. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the biggest thing for me. You know, it's mm -hmm. something that I would like to wear something that I think I could see people wearing. So how can people get a hold of your merch? It's, it's on your Twitter. Isn't yeah, it? um, you can go to ryanvargas.com, and then there should be a extension to go to the website. I still need to update that website too, man. Yeah, I noticed it's got uh, stuff from 2021. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, um, I'm I, I I keep seeing the uh, payment come up for it, and I uh, like I saw the payment come up for it just recently. I was like, oh man, I've not been on there for a while. Yeah, and, and that's there you one go. thing. I, I'm very savvy at social media, but when it comes to web design, not not my forte. So if anybody knows mm -hmm. how to do that, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's something else I got into, but I'm, I do that, but it's like, it takes time. It oh, takes yeah. more time. And so, yeah. like I said, I could work my way around a Twitter, but I can't work it around the website. <laughs> yeah. <I> understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what was your, uh, all right. So we were going back to California, but mm -hmm. what made, what triggered you to the point was to say that I'm going to move out to yeah. out, out East. Yeah. So the biggest thing, you know, for me, and it, it's kind of a little bit of a story. So like, in 2017, like back in August 2017, I remember, you know, that was when I was still running late models. We owned our own, we owned our own car, mm -hmm. and my parents, you know, we sat down at the dinner table and we, and, you know, I remember them saying, you know, all right, you know, this is, you know, just we want you to know we're done after this, you know. And when you're racing late models, you know, for the most part, you know, when you're racing at that local level, for the most part, it's out of your own, it's it's out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And I and I watched friends of mine. You know, people I've, I've watched competitors and friends of mine lose a lot of things to try and afford to go racing. And I told my family from the very beginning that if we ever get to a point where it's like, this isn't going to be smart for us, let's stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm not like, I am not going to live with that mm -hmm. on my shoulders. Like, I'm not going to race with like our house on our shoulders because that's not because I've seen people race like that and it's mm -hmm. not healthy. But later that that month, I sent out my application to drive to join. Um. For, for to attend the NASCAR Drive for Diversity Combine, uh, myself being Mexican American, you know, I, you know, we were one of, I think I was, I won the Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award in 2016 and 17, um, being the high, highest uh, minority or female driver in the uh, uh, national series, the mm -hmm. Wheel and All American Series, the timed out the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. Um, finished 17th overall in the nation out of, I think it was like a couple hundred drivers, I think it was like 700 drivers, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I submit my application and I actually get a response. You know, I go to the combine. I actually get accepted to go to the combine, go to the combine. And sure enough, we we make the team. Cool. And that extended my life in racing. Sure. Like that was a very pivotal moment for me because that introduced me to the business. Mm -hmm. That introduced me to doing all that. And one of the biggest things is I had to move out there. Mm -hmm. So my dad and I, I was 17 years old. You know, my dad and I, we packed up our truck. We We left. California. We went to North Carolina. We got an apartment over in Concord. Um, he lived with me for a few months. And then when I turned 18, he moved back to California. Mm. Um, and I manned the fort myself. And for the next few years, I used race winnings to pay for rent. Oh, wow. I, 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 I helped pay for, I, I, I paid for rent using race winnings mm -hmm. in 2019 when I did that late model schedule that I did that following season um and that was a big thing for me sure. um yeah because that taught me a little bit about that that humbled you that humbles you very quick mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. when when you are at that point where you're having to rebuild you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i had that fantastic opportunity with rev racing in 2018 and then like, as i mentioned they downsized from three to two i was the new guy you know although i beat my teammate it's one of those things where business and i they're doing fantastic today and i'm very excited for them but you which, know, which race team was that? Rev Racing. Rev, okay. Yeah. Uh, they just won the ARCA championship this year. Okay. Um, but the, like I said, you know, when you're spending that time rebuilding, you know, and then having to use something that you're trying to make a career out of to actually now pay your bills. You know what I mean? Because when you're racing local, you're not doing that. Right. But when you're landing these deals and actually trying to make a living off of it, that will wake you up a little bit and tell sure. you what you need to work on what yeah. where where's your weaknesses where where do you need to grow um and that was a very important time for me for sure mm -hmm. yep that's a that's way one of those things is uh, if you got to perform or you're not going to have a place to live mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah you've yeah. got something <laughs> something real big that's pushing you at that point and that's mm -hmm. i mean that's probably one of the biggest things that can drive you to be better yep yeah. is uh you you kind of driving with with uh that 
uh, push and force of uh, I've got to do good or oh yeah or you know yeah I mean that I mean it bought me groceries like it's kind of funny like that's very the like a lot of people say that's the old school way and that's kind of true yeah. like if I won the race on Saturday I had enough for groceries and then some if I didn't mm-hmm. all right well um, just got to make it make it make it work mm-hmm. you know and I'm and I'm and I'm very fortunate you know my parents have been very supportive through everything and it's um, with helping me with these decisions you know steering me the right way. Um, and it's been, it's been a very big learning process throughout my whole life. Mm, yeah, sure. So have you gotten any, any other podcasts for most, I mean, people wanting you to be on there? This is probably, I think this is my third one. Okay. So, I mean, that's what I, and that's, yeah. I like doing this. I like talking yeah. racing. Like, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that people don't, that people will very quickly realize about me is I don't shut up. Mm-hmm. Like I, if, if you, you mean you asked me, when did I move to Charlotte? And I told you a whole winded story of why I moved here. It's good. So, I mean, that's, that's just how I am. Yeah. Um, I like talking. <laughs> good for That's you. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Sherman Stoney says, Stoney students needed to hear that. Thank you, Ryan. No, thank you. Yeah. Stoney's kids, I started calling them. Uh, <laughs> they're, yeah. <laughs> That's got a good yeah. ring to it. <clears throat> yeah. So when it, you uh, decided to, no, I was going to ask you another question. What was it? What was the question I was going to ask him, Bryson? Sometimes you read my mind like yeah, that. Yeah. Some, sometimes oh. me and him think of, Pretty good alike, but I don't remember what it was. That's I don't know. We're, we're not on sync tonight. We're not on know. sync tonight. Yes. No. <laughs> Do you have any trips planned for the winter? Going back to California. Okay. Um, back in December, uh, see some family, and then I'll be back before New Year. Mm-hmm. Um, December is such a weird time because, mm-hmm. especially when you're trying to do what I do, when you're trying to find sponsorship or lock lock certain things in and stuff like that. And like once you get to like December eighteenth, nineteenth. Mm-hmm. Everybody's checked out. <laughs> yeah, so, oh yeah. So like, I'll be like, I remember my first time. Like, I think it was like 2019 when I st- was really starting to first get into marketing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember making a trip to California, and I was like wigging out. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not doing work. I'm like wasting time. I'm wasting time. And then it kind of hit me. I'm like, oh yeah, nobody's working. <laughs> yes. yeah. Like I'm kind so of just is. getting anxious for no reason. <laughs> right. Yes. So when I did a thumbnail for the show tonight, I was in the promos on Instagram and mm-hmm. Twitter and all that. I was the first thing I did was I used the TikTok car and I used the two different angles, and it was on there. And then I got to think, oh, wait a minute, he's, he's probably going to use want to use Swan, yeah, just because that was your most recent. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. and, I, and I mean, and that's been you know that TikTok deal that was such a big deal for me. That I mean, that's what a lot of people you know first. That's how a lot of people first heard of Ryan Vargas. I remember mm-hmm. that, yeah, uh, very clearly, and I was yeah. like, oh, the TikTok car, yeah, that's it. like that yeah. was a lot of people's first big introduction to me. Like people, mm-hmm. like I, I was very fortunate to have a pretty decent fan base when I first jumped into Xfinity, like mm-hmm. which was neat. Like I, I, that was a very unique thing for me mm-hmm. because, like, to have so many people kind of in your corner, that is something as a driver that definitely helps you mm-hmm. because. It's easy as a driver to get in your own head. Mm. I am very guilty of that, mm. you know, even as recent as this year. But when you have people who you can lean on, like one of the best things I have right now, um, other than my girlfriend, is I, I'm, my roommate is Myatt Snyder, mm. who races in Xfinity with me. Yeah. And so he gets it. I know his dad. Yeah, Marty. Yeah. So, you know, having a good buddy like him, having but other buddies like Brad Perez and stuff like that, knowing your team you know, if you have a good group of people around you, that's a, that's a big, big asset. Yeah. That's definitely very important. Oh, so any other trips planned for the winter time? So going to California? Yeah. I mean, mm. nothing really. Yeah. I, I, I don't sleep. Yeah. So I try and catch up on it during the off season. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's been my thing. I <laughs> slept for, I think this Sunday mm. I woke up at like 3 PM and I was so happy about it. Nice, nice. I think nice. I slept a whole 13 hours. <laughs> and I had done that since I was like yeah. 17. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting closer. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, we just wait till you hit 51. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, the only reason I asked you that is because I know it's like, you know, you hear you hear people say off season and this kind of stuff. But I, I know how, you know, I, wor- I worked in NASCAR 95 is my first full year yep. in, in NASCAR Cup Series. And we used to, it, off season was like extremely busy for us. I was going to say the off season is just as busy, mm-hmm. if not more busy. Like, oh, yeah. I was curious about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't get to make trips much. I mean, frankly, that just costs too much. I got to worry about mm-hmm. rent. Yes. Um, like I, that plain and simple, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I, mm-hmm. I make okay money, but I got to still worry about rent at the end of the, at the end of the month and groceries and all that stuff, mm-hmm. vehicles to pay off and stuff. So it's like, I, I don't have the. I don't really get to do many vacations. Yeah, I got you. Just do fun stuff like doing podcasts and things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
you know, come back here next Monday if you want. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I know you were doing the iRacing thing. Yeah. But I mean, I'm I, not, and I'm also just not the biggest vacation guy. Mm-hmm. I, I like going on trips. Like if you have to really get me excited to go on a trip to go to a trip though. All right. That's a big thing. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. My wife loves going on the cruises mm-hmm. and uh, going to all these different beaches and stuff. I don't like getting on airplanes so much and I don't like waiting in lines. I'm not very yeah. patient with that, but I just go along with it because, you know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes it's getting there and you get to do, <clears throat> get, getting away, but it's hard for me to even get away because I'm always working, always doing yep. something. And that's exactly how I am. Mm-hmm. Like I am always in like marketing mode, mm-hmm. sell mode, all that stuff. Like that's my, that's my brain. That's how it's wired. I'll be walk, driving down the road and I'll see a business that I pass and I'm like, all right, let me look that up on LinkedIn. Yes. Like it's, it's just how I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you sound a lot like me. Uh, Lana Jinx says that TikTok car was one of my favorites. Yeah, that that mm-hmm. that car. Yeah, going back to that. Yes. Um, that car, that whole deal. That was my first ever big sponsor. You know what I mean? Like I had, had smaller sponsors here and there, who thankfully it helped me out a lot. Um, but TikTok jumping on board. That was like I said. That was the first real deal. You know that I really had to do a lot of negotiating and stuff like that for. I was 19, sitting in oh. a, a Zoom meeting with the head of marketing, the global head of marketing, the head of legal, like all this stuff, Mm -hmm. having to go through tons and tons of approval processes for the paint scheme because, you know, there were certain ways they had to have their logo and stuff like that. So it's all about making sure that you're ready to go and get all that stuff going. How did that help your TikTok account? Oh, it bolstered that big time. (laughs) Um, I was, (laughs) I was, that that really put me in front of a lot of people and that was a, a very big blessing to me because that also showed to a lot of people that you know i can represent a company yeah you know this this global tech giant in tiktok is trusting this 19 20 year old kid mm-hmm. to market them to yeah. literally be the face of their brand in a new sport and a new market that they haven't been in mm-hmm. and that right there set the tone for what i try and do Sure. Like we'll have these random big deals where we have, you know, with Swan Security, we were able to have Best Buy on the car a couple times and Brandsmar USA. You know, we did Alvin Kamara. He was on my car at the Daytona Road Course in 2021. Um, earlier this year, we had Reddit. You know, they, mm-hmm. they were on our race car. So that set the tone, you know, for, mm-hmm. for making some of these things happen and, and really trying to show like, hey, there's still a big, a big want for this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's it's changed over the past year. Like I mentioned, I was when I started in 95, we didn't have that. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have cell phones. You know, you didn't have social media, yep. any of that kind of stuff. And then now, though, if you can be an influencer, you can have your social media and all that stuff. That's very important. Yep, that's a big, big deal. I mean, it, it, and the thing is, like, for social media, it's the easiest form of free advertising. Mm-hmm. That's the best way I could say it. It is free advertising. That's why whenever drivers are like, oh, you're on social media so much, how do you do that? It's like, dude, it's free. Right. Like, yeah. it's free advertising that you have control over. Yeah. Yep. It's almost like instead of paying it's someone, a dream. You're, you're saving money because you're doing it yourself, but you're getting into free advertising. Exactly. Period. So, yes. Very yep. good. Well, is there anything you want to tell our listeners that, uh, that any of... Uh, Anything else? Anything else? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, that we didn't cover, I guess is what I'm getting at. No, I mean, it's just, you know, I appreciate all those who are listening, um, whether you're in your car or watching online or all that stuff. It's um, appreciate y'all tuning in and listening to me ramble about race cars for an hour or so. And um, thank you to you guys for having me. Um, and I hope those who are listening, maybe you'll check me out, you know, whether it be on social or just look up my name on the internet, um, Ryan Vargas. Um, you know, I'm just a regular dude who gets to do what I love. And that's what I try and mm-hmm. that's the, that's the kind of vibe that I try and share with everybody else. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Follow him on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook and you can see his, uh, do you have anything on YouTube? I do have a YouTube. I need to get back on there though. I haven't posted mm-hmm. in over a year and a half, two years. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So follow him. So it's pretty entertaining and I like keeping up with you and I'll continue to keep up with you and we'll Thank be, you. we'll be uh, talking about you every once in a while. And that kind of stuff is uh, Dickie Dennis says, has Ryan ever had a veteran's name on your, his car? Uh, a veteran as in a driver? Like, well, no, as in a, he, he's an army vet. Oh, an army. Yes. Um, so um, we've done a bunch of stuff. I actually did a big campaign with our, with some friends at uh, recruit military. They were my sponsor at the Charlotte oh. that the, at, during the 600 week and Memorial day weekend. Okay. Um, they help a lot of, you know, 
people who have been who have just gotten out of you know from serving find jobs you know find job opportunities um, in various different industries so that's been a big thing and then Williamsburg contracting uh, a sponsor of mine out of Williamsburg Virginia uh, William so yeah. Williamsburg contracting is owned by Aaron Beavers who okay. sir who is a Purple Heart recipient served okay. in, served in Iraq and was injured and he is a Purple Heart recipient and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, mm-hmm. that's that's a one really good thing that I really enjoy about what I get to do too is I get to build some really good relationships with the people that support me okay and um, Aaron you know he went to battle he came back and you know and he is now a Purple Heart recipient mm-hmm. and I'm very glad to represent you know him you know what he's done you know for us um, but also represent his company and try and help him out and help his you know organization the best way I can you know they were on our car at Martinsville mm-hmm. and uh very excited for what's to come with them. Okay, how about that? Dickie's about a, an hour or so away from um, Williamsburg. Oh, okay. He's up in Hovewell. Well, check him out. If you need your driveway paved that yeah. or brickwork or whatever, the Williamsburg contracting up in Williamsburg, Virginia, those are your guys. Cool. Yeah, he said, uh, God bless you. Yeah, thank you. And he said, and then uh, Stoney's asking, when is your next race? Uh, that is TBD or TBA, I should say. To be announced. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh, I didn't ask you who your favorite driver was growing up. Jeff Gordon. Okay. I was a big Jeff Gordon guy. I I, I grew up in the flame era, era, so I got to yeah. see a car with race with bright Seems orange flames go and win oh, races. Yeah, that's right. He was doing very good. He uh, it was either when I was going to the track, he was winning, or, or Earnhardt was winning, and mm-hmm. they were battling each other, or Dale Jarrett, and yeah, that was all. <clears throat> but he was California and in, in Indiana. Yep. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Bryson, you got any parting words? Yeah, well, I just want to say thanks for, yeah. for coming in. It's been great meeting with you and talking with you. I wish we had a little more time. I'm kind of like you. I love talking about racing and, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of – especially people like at school, they're like, man, would you just shut up? Like, talk about <laughs> oh, racing enough. Yeah, sure. uh, but it's been a great conversation, so it's been great having you on. Oh, and, thank uh, you. Uh, David, thanks for letting me uh, come hang out. And uh, I always look forward to uh, – well, I was going to say Monday night, just Tuesday night, but yeah. uh, you know, yes. changing always, it up. Yeah, yes. it's good. I always look forward to the show, but uh, Ryan, thanks again, and yeah. we'll see you at the track. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming in, and uh, maybe if anything in the future you you need to you decide you get a itching for wanting to be back on a podcast, and you're welcome to come up. Or that works for me. We can even uh, change it up and do it somewhere else or whatever. We're going to be, <laughs> you know, I think next week we're going to be at Stocks for Tots actually next Tuesday. I'll be there. So, oh, you'll be there. Okay. I well, will be cool. there. Good, Good deal. All right. Well, we'll be set up and uh, i got to figure out if I'm going to do some kind of live or if we're just going to, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Because last year we didn't have that great of a, re- a reception. I mean, of our uh, internet wasn't all the mm, best. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll definitely document it though. And we'll uh, work, work through it and, uh, Hopefully get some good content out of it. It's mm-hmm. it's socks for tots is such a cool event and such. It's a my great, first year doing it. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's let's see. Last year was my first year getting to be a part of it. So it's just you know it's it's such a cool thing that they do and uh, uh, for for those kids and everything and uh, the support that it has, especially from the racing world and the drivers. It's yeah. just uh, super cool. So that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm excited. All right. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll see y'all uh, next. Monday, or I believe we're going to do a show. No, we're going to do next Tuesday, Stocks for Tots. So I think we're probably going to take Monday off. But y'all have a great week, and thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you later. Hey, we got Ryan Scott.